I'm putting together a small salad and I cut open this bell pepper and there is a pepper growing inside of the bell pepper. That's a first for me. I've never seen that before. Joe said a set of lungs, and but I said it's the heart. It's shaped just like a heart. Yes, my dear, that certainly does appear to be that. Have you ever seen that before on a bell pepper? No, I haven't. It's the first time. Okay, so today I'm going to make some breakfast steak. And it's one of my favorite things to do. And um, it's really easy, and I just thought I'd show you how to do it. But I buy this at Ingalls. It's called breakfast steak. And it's just really thin slices of steak. This one was marked down to $2.96. This one was marked down to $1.42. So into my skillet, I have a little bit of oil, avocado oil, that's what I use, and a pat of butter, and that's heating up. And while that's heating up, I'm going to um, take a knife and just gently make diagonal cuts across the top, flip it over, and do diagonal on the bottom. Then I salt and pepper it and put it in the skillet and sear it. When you, when you make the diagonal cuts, you don't want to cut all the way through the meat. Just barely cut the top of it off. Not off, but cut into the top. Okay, I've got those sliced. Wash my hands. Now I'm going to salt and pepper both sides. Okay, now I have the oil and butter melted. I had to turn it down because it was boiling and I didn't want the butter to burn. So I'll give it a chance to heat up just a little bit here. And I put it back on medium high. Okay, the oil is hot now, so I'm going to add the steak. And I'll have to cure them on both sides in two batches. In about a minute or so, and I'm going to open. Now, you see that nice peel around the edge? Now, we'll peel the second side. Okay, I think this should be good enough. Yep. I'll take these out and put the second batch in. I'm ready to turn these. One indication is the meat will start browning around the edges, and you can see that from the top side. So that's an indication that they're ready to flip. Now after that's been going for a while on the second side, I'm going to go ahead and add my meat from the first batch. Just layer it on top.
And while the skillet is still on medium high, I'm going to add some Worcestershire sauce. Just sprinkle a little bit on top of each steak. Then have your lid ready and add a little bit of water. Put the lid on to capture all of that steam. I don't have a lid for this skillet, so I'm using a multi-purpose lid that has uh, the silicone. It's got different sizes of skillets that it will fit on, and I love it. Can't remember where I got it, though. Probably Walmart or Ross or somewhere like that. Um, then you're going to turn it down to low and let it sit there and simmer with the lid on for about an hour and a half and they will be so tender and delicious. So it's been about an hour and a half without taking the cover off and it still has a little liquid in the bottom and that's what you want. You don't want the liquid to run dry. So there's still a little in there and it makes great juice to serve on top of your steak. Okay, we're not going to eat the steak right now, but Joe's going to taste it for you. It's going to be a lovely, lovely... Smells good, doesn't it? It smells up the whole house while it's cooking. Okay, here we go. Well, that was tender, the way you cut it. There you go. Good. This steak I like Free. to have on hand. We can eat it for dinner with some steamed vegetables or a salad. It makes a great um, sandwich for breakfast. Put it on a biscuit with some egg and cheese or just steak and cheese biscuit. It makes a great sandwich. Just put some mayonnaise on a piece of bread and put that steak on it cheese if you want cheese so it's very versatile and it's easy to make and it's really good I agree so y'all try it and let me know what you think All right. hey it's going to be a busy day today um, it's noon and I'm headed to um, the church for a funeral visitation which will be sad and um, from there got a few errands to do and um, our blood supply in the region is critically low so I'm going to go get blood and that's something I used to do regularly but I have kind of slacked off on it so um, I'm just watching for traffic here at the bottom of the driveway So I'm going to do that today, and um, if you all are in the practice of giving blood, I highly recommend you do that. It's such a needed um, sacrifice, and it saves lives. And I just hope I'm never in a position where I'm needing blood, but um, if I am, I sure hope they're doing construction right here. New subdivision going in. <laughs> anyway, uh, we need to keep the blood, blood supply stocked. And uh, give blood if you can. And we'll be talking with you later. Here's all the tribute horse feed they've got, and I've been given a 14%, but I think I'm going to go for 12% protein. There's the 14. 
solutions 14 and down here is solutions 12. Okay, I need two bags of Tribute Solutions 12 pellet. All right. What else have they got in here that I might need? warmer. I really like Stronged. I just bought the Safeguard. They don't have the Stronged either. Alright. There's anything else I need. Got that on order. So now I need to go over here to the side to pick it up. Yes. All right. Got two bags. I'll go get the other one. Mm -hmm. Just lay it on top of that Here. cooler. It'll be okay. fine. Right All right. So I'm here at the Marsh Regional Blood Center, and I'm going to go in, and hopefully they won't have any trouble getting my blood. Okay, I'm standing in the hallway to get signed in. There's like five people in front of me. I hope this won't take too long. Joe and I are here to eat lunch at Black Olive in Jonesboro. Now Black Olive was just recently voted the Tri-Cities Best Italian Restaurant. So we're going to... They gonna... deserved it too. <laughs> We've eaten here quite often. And uh, they have this location in Jonesboro. They have one in Elizabethton. And they have plans to open one in Kingsport. So we're going to have lunch and we'll show you what we eat and how we like it. Well, my food was absolutely delicious, and I couldn't eat it all. For a lunch portion, it was quite a bit of food, so I'm taking the rest of it home. But Joe is still working on his spaghetti and meatballs. He says they're delicious. He's probably going to take some home with him, too, aren't you, honey? You're going to eat it all? You're going to eat it all, or you can't eat it all? Uh -huh. Well, he has finished the whole plate of spaghetti. He ate the whole thing, so it must have been really good. Our server, right through there, is so nice. And um, the dish that I ordered came with a gorgonzola cheese sauce, and I wasn't sure I would like it didn't really know what it was and he said that it's kind of a blue cheese flavor of a cheese sauce so he told me if I didn't like it he would bring me something different but I asked if he would bring me just a little taste of the sauce to see if I was going to like it and that way the whole dish would not be wasted so he did he brought a little cup of the sauce and you can see the blue cheese crumbles in it and it is really good. <laughs> I 
now we've decided to come downtown Jonesboro and just walk a little bit to walk this food off. And this is the town that Joe and I were married in. Yes, it was. And there was a gazebo down here in Mill Spring Park, and that's where we got married. So we'll see if we can find a parking place. We'll go here to your right. See if there's something down here behind the courthouse. There might be one right here. I don't, it looks tight though, don't it? Yeah, you can get it in there though. Getting in now, the car would be the problem, I think. No, it, 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 nothing to protect the Gitches there. How about right here? There's one up here. Right up here. Okay, we've parked here beside the courthouse and across the street on the corner is Texas Burritos and More. That's a very popular Mexican restaurant. And we're here at the courthouse on the side entrance. Okay, we're on Main Street, Jonesboro, and across the street is Jonesboro Antiques. I enjoy browsing through there when we have to go in there. Next door is Gabrielle's Christmas store. I guess that's everything Christmas. On down the street, I know there is a lollipop shop, candy store, a salary place maybe. Um, and this way, there is Tennessee Tales Pet Boutique. There's Tennessee Hemp Company. And on down there in the corner, that used to be, um, is it called the Barrel? Crate and Barrel or something? Restaurant? I don't know. We'll walk down this way and see. This is the courthouse. Okay, the Crate and Barrel restaurant, I don't see it. It may have gone out of business. But on the corner, it's called McLeod. And it looks like it has candles and gifts and stuff in there. And I don't see a sign on the store next to it. And it says it's an organic. Organic. <laughs> Mox is across the street here on the corner. It's a gift shop. And on down here in this little brick building that says the mail pouch on the side of it, it's called the Crafty Peddler. It's a little gift shop. And on down the street, on the next corner, is the um, National Storytelling Building. And every year in October, <clears throat> they have a big festival here with international storytellers. It draws people from all over the world. So we'll keep walking on down. Okay, we just left Malt. Here's the sign on the side of their building. And we'll go on down the street. Oh, 
over here is the Chester Inn State Historic Site. You go in on the bottom level and they have guided tours inside. It tells you a lot about the Jonesboro history. And this is a popular place to eat called the Main Street Cafe and Catering. They have a little bit of seating out here, lots inside. And they have a Jonesboro Repertory Theater um, here. And they are converting this building into a new theater called the Jackson because Andrew Jackson was here. Did Andrew Jackson live here? <laughs> I think he'd stay here. But anyway, here is Billboards. It's a wonderful life, a live radio play. And that's in, uh, looks like November. <laughs> this is Dearly Beloved. That's going on now, January 19. January 19 through February 4. And beautiful, a Carol King musical. And that's February 23 through March 10. But this Jackson Theater is not open yet, but they are working on it. These are the marquees for the Jonesboro Repertory Theater. Here's another one called The Play That Goes Wrong. That's in April. And Into the Woods, it's a music and lyrics by Stephen Sodheim. And that's in May and June. So right down here is the entrance to the Jonesboro Repertory Theater. Oh, it used to be right down this alley. Right down through there. Yep, and this is the one that's playing now called Dearly Beloved. The train's coming through. This building is called Eureka, Eureka Inn. <laughs> it's called Eureka Inn. And this is a very historic building in Jonesboro. And Joe and I spent our first night as a married couple right here. And do you remember when we got married, honey? The gazebo in the park, the train track ran right by it. Yeah. And the train came through and blew the horn. Yeah. From this point on, you see the train going down there. So from this point on at the street, it's getting into more residential. This building on the corner is called the Blair Moore House, and it's a bed and breakfast. And Jack Moore, a uh, looking glass maker, his shop is in the back here. So we'll cross over right here. This is a beautiful old home here on Main Street, Jonesboro. And I actually went to a, uh, a tea. It was like a, a bridal shower or something they had in there. It's beautiful inside. Well, I went there for a... Uh, 
I'm saying. I'm, 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 was it an auction or something you went to? No, it was a c case in court. Oh. You were a juror? No, yeah. Well, and you went to that house? Yeah, those windows, multiple other windows. Uh-huh. They sit right near there. Well, how funny. Here's the plaque. The May Dishner House has been placed on the National Register of Historic Places. So that's what it's called, the May Dishner House. It's beautiful. So this is a better view of the Eureka Inn we stayed in when we got married. Joe's down here looking up at me. <laughs> but it's a beautiful place. The street is pretty full today with people out enjoying the sunshine, walking their dogs. There goes one with the Bernie no doodle. <laughs> pretty dog. But this is the Christopher Taylor house. Um, this log house was built in 1777 by this officer who was a veteran of the French and Indian War and a major in the American Revolutionary War. He is buried in the family cemetery nearby and Andrew Jackson lived here in 1788-89 to 89 while practicing law in Jonesboro. The house was moved intact to this site in 1974 to preserve it from demolition. Neat. I love the big tall rock fireplace. And this is the historic Chester Inn on this end. It says, um, built in 1797 by Dr. William P. Chester of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It has been continuously occupied as an inn a hotel, and an apartment house. Among the guests here have been three presidents of the United States, Andrew Jackson, James K. Polk, and Andrew Johnson, as well as John Sevier, Governor of Franklin, and first Governor of Tennessee. President Andrew Jackson held a reception for his friends on the porch of the inn in the summer of 1832. So here we go. The sidewalk goes under the porch of the Chester Inn. And they have the windows with these old pictures, historic pictures of Jonesboro. And if you live in the area and you've never been inside the Chester Inn, you need to do that one day. So much interesting information in there. And this is the hours of operation. And here is the um, storytelling hall. There's a view of mocks from across the street. And next weekend is a big weekend for Jonesboro. They're having the annual chocolate fest. And we're back here at the place called McLeod Organics. Says ice cream, organic essential oils, chocolates, herb teas, bulk herbs, and cosmetics. And this looks like a jewelry store, Crystal Raven. Yeah. 
here is old fashioned ice cream called Mom's. I think this is where that uh, crate and barrel place, if that's the correct name that it used to be. in the antique shop and okay here's Jones for antiques the courthouse they have a photo prop for Valentine's Day in Arbor with all the little red hearts and greenery and, and they have a bench here with pillows so I'm gonna try to take a picture of me and Joe <laughs>
back home and we wanted to tell you what we thought about eating at the Black Olive today. So, what's your comments? Well, my comments are as all positive. I got spaghetti, meatballs, and something else. It was all good. It was all good. Every bit of it. I ate everything on my plate. It was a big plate too, and I was surprised he ate every bit of it, but he did, and it's delicious, wasn't it? Yeah. He said, and my chicken penny um, gar. Gonzola <laughs> cheese sauce. It came with uh, baked sliced chicken and mushrooms and garlic and a peony pasta and then that cheese sauce. I wasn't sure that I would like the cheese sauce. I have never had it before, but the waiter graciously bought, brought a sample of it and I tasted it and I liked it. So I went ahead and ordered the dish. It was absolutely delicious. Both of their entrees were $10.50, I think, because Joe got extra meat sauce on his. They added an upcharge. It was worth every penny. <laughs> and, of course, the bread. And uh, our total bill was $24.10 before um, tip. And Joe's got his eyes on TV because breaking news is we finally retaliated. You all know what I mean. <laughs> So we came home to that news. So he's wanting to get back to the TV, but uh, we enjoyed our lunch time out and strolling through Jonesboro and hope you enjoyed it talk too. And thanks for watching. And until next time, keep walking in the light. Keep it walking. And a talking. Yeah. And a singing in Jesus name. <laughs> <laughs>